time to talk about cuddle party again. What happens? What have we not covered? I was thinking about as a facilitator and as a participant, what can you expect from your facilitator? What are they there for? And what are they not there for? People could arrive and think, oh, people are just going to be assigned a cuddle partner and then feel disappointed because they didn't cuddle with anybody. But that's mm-hmm. not really what we do there. So what can you expect from a facilitator and what are they not there for? Yeah, that's a great, great question. And I love teaching about facilitating. So, and it's it's a separate thing. So first of all, you've pointed out a really important thing so that, of what we're not, right? So a facilitator is not, for one, we're not a therapist, right? So you're not signing up for personal therapy. You're not coming to get therapy. You're coming to experience a cuddle party workshop, a particular format, and there's structure to that. Um, and find out as much as you can, ask the questions you need to up front as a participant, um, know that you can come and not participate in anything, that you can get a full refund after the welcome circle, those kinds of things. Um, but it's not therapy. We're not therapists, we're not licensed therapists. We're also not teachers, right? We're not there to instruct you on how to cuddle. We're there to really create what we call a container, to create a space that has very explicit guidelines and agreements. And we're really there to hold to those agreements. We sometimes we joke about being the lifeguard on duty. We're kind of like that, right? We're the lifeguard. We're not the swim instructor. We're not the, you know, but we're really there to to contain the space, to create the structure, to direct traffic, I say a lot, is what we're there to do. Um, you know, to open it and to end it and to be available to listen and to hear people's experiences. We're there to kind of attune and empathize, to listen. Um, we're there to kind of ask interested, curious questions that will point you back to your own truth or your own empowerment. Those are, those are the things that we're there to do as a facilitator. And why is it that we read the script, even those who've run a hundred cuddle parties, why are they having a binder in front of them that they are reading when they might have it memorized? That's such a great question. Um, First of all, it's intellectual property and it is quality content. It's just really good. And part of that is also what I'm going to call standardization, which is quality assurance for participants. So you can go to a cuddle party anywhere in the world and with any certified facilitator and know that you're going to get the same content, the same guidelines. Now it'll be different. Each facilitator has their own fear, their own personality, their own style. You, you, you'll, you know, some you, you'll have your preferences. Um, there's definitely different personalities to every event, but there is that structure that, that is solid. And that's our, our, our brand, you know, it's our trademark and our branding. And that really gives a lot of assurance. Um, that's the main answer. There's probably others, but it's also, it's not a performance. We're not there to perform or necessarily, we want it to be engaging and entertaining, but you know, it's, uh, that's, that's also part of it. And we certainly learn to speak up and say no and ask for what we want at Cuddle Party, but let's say someone, you know, kind of stays quiet the whole time. They don't ask anyone to cuddle. Then they say, oh gosh, I'm so sad or I'm disappointed you know, you know, I didn't get to cuddle. What might you advise them for next time to empower themselves so they get more of what they want and don't kind of expect it to just drop into their lap? Somewhat pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a great place to kind of conclude, which is that the first thing is that there is a next one, like come back, right? Because that's the beautiful thing. This is a this is a a learning and growing process, and people come because they're different at each one, and they hear the welcome circle differently. And there's always a new opportunity. And for me, it's really about the noticing, and checking in. Well, yeah, where was I at? What did I want that I didn't get? What was available that I didn't do? Did I ask for things? What did I not ask for? What stopped me from not asking? That's all about awareness and tuning in. And there isn't a right or wrong as much as we can notice what's happening. And that's really what I love about facilitation. Our job is to create a space for people to become more present to and aware of their own world, what's going on inside of them and what their choices are and what's preventing them from making those choices. I, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a- my answer. <laughs> Thank you, Larissa, for asking these questions. I 
always enjoy these conversations. Thank you. Me too. And I, I love that, you know, when we think we've covered everything, there's always more to learn and go deeper. So thank you so much.